Hello, hello, everybody. It's 6.14 p.m. Central Time on the 4th of September, 2022. Hope you're doing well. Let me get a display capture turned on. We're looking at a black screen because I'm on the wife's computer. On the wife's computer, if you don't know why. I'm not going to get into it now. We have a 6.9, let's just call it a 7, a 7.0 range earthquake that struck right here on our letter X. This is at the middle of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. But to understand where this earthquake came from, we actually have to go back a few days, and we have to look directly through the planet to the opposite side of the planet, to what's called the antipode, to the opposite side of the planet. And that's going to take us all the way over here to this, to this 6.1 earthquake here at the Solomon Islands, eastern Papua New Guinea. And it was actually a little bit bigger when it first came in reported. It could have gone up to as high as mid-range 6. But let me just turn off the earth here and we'll show you how close of an antipode we are to one another. An antipode, again, the opposite side of the planet. We are within a few degrees of being exact opposites. Now this goes into a big discovery that, of course, I've talked about for several years, for 10 years. Professionals came in and got on board a couple of years ago and confirmed that over, I think it's over 80% of earthquakes 6.0 and greater have an antipode earthquake within three days that's either equal or greater than the original quake that strikes on the opposite side of the planet. So they found, after studying over 5,000 different 6.0 or greater earthquakes, that when a 6 happens on one side of the planet, within three days on the opposite side of the planet, something equal to or greater strikes. And that's the professionals talking about that. Now, I already told you guys about that for 10 years. They said it was conspiracy theory and all kinds of stuff when I was talking about it for the last 10 years. Now it's confirmed. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's how it goes in the science world, by the way, when you talk about things that they say are not possible. They call it a conspiracy theory. It's kind of weird. Anyway, what else is going on? We have the big earthquakes on both sides of the planet. That's sixes. And then we look at the deep earthquake activity in the fives, which are spreading out across the plates as normal. And I say normal, we really need to go check the USGS plate boundary map to show you the normal path. And they have it marked. They just don't have arrows telling you which way to look for it to spread. Uh, they have the plate boundaries marked in red here on the screen for easy identification. And you can see, for instance, the plate boundary around the Pacific, the plate boundary around the Indo-Australian plate, the plate boundary that goes over to the west, all the way out to the Mid-Atlantic Ridge over here past west of Europe. And if you zoom in close, you'll be able to see that we go out the opposite direction across South America and Central America, and we head over this way to the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, this way east of the Pacific, and the plate boundaries lead right over to our spot that just broke with a 6.9 to 7.0 earthquake. Uh, I'm going to get the information on this from the USGS. It's down here at the bottom of the screen. It does have a little wave here, but I'm thinking that tsunami warning is probably just an advisory or something like that. Yeah, look, it's green. It, it, this is They'll do that with a big earthquake that does strike. They'll analyze it, put it up on the feed, and uh, if there is a tsunami, it'll be red, and it will get all kinds of notices, and the buoys will go into event modes, um, that kind of thing. So... What I want to do, though, is I want to pull the coordinates on this and go put them in on Google Earth. Now, I'm using a copy of Google Earth that I just uploaded. I do not have any of my place marked on this. Like I said, wife's computer. Uh, it is what it is. They're going to trash this one next. In case you don't know, I got hacked multiple times. All of my computers were bricked, destroyed, uh, including my new laptop. Somebody got me good, guys. They got me real good. I don't know who it is. Somebody's got some skill. I'm working on getting a solution to that. Anyway, so here we are. We're at the middle of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. We have a fracture zone east and west, but that just connects in, of course, to the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. But if you go east or west, what? where do we go? Well, we go over this way over into Africa, and we go this way over into northern South America. And northern South America just had all that earthquake activity over the past several days. Let me show it to you. Right here, you see it? These are all marked in white over the past day. Going back two days, three days, you can see it. It's a lit up like an arrow pointing over to our X's. I would like to point out, too, that this 7.0 range quake struck right in the middle of our letter X. X marks the spot. 
and it's we don't move these X's, guys. These are on the screen permanently. These are spots where we watch for the energy to flow to from the opposite side of the planet from over here. We watch the energy to flow out and away over to the X's, and that's exactly what's happened. Now, there also has been a series of stepping stone earthquakes going across the Pacific down to the south, following it like an avenue. You can see the undersea mounts that go back up to the north. They go back up and connect to Tonga there. But you see it goes down to this is called Point Nemo, by the way, where they're going to crash the International Space Station, the deepest part of the ocean with the furthest distance from land on any spot, right? Well, anyway, we have two fracture zones that go right down there, and they go down and connect into the Antarctic Plate, which, if we go back and look at the USGS Plate Boundary Map, if I even, it's still, do I still have it open? Yeah, let's go down to Antarctica here. Point Nemo. Yes, Point Nemo. Right down here, you see? See the fracture zone? Now that's, again, I said Antarctic, because really that's the plate here. Now it's stretched out on this flat Earth map. Ah, USGS flat Earth. Anyway, here, right down at the center of the bottom southern part of the plate, that six struck coming across this way indicating that the eastern Pacific and southeastern Pacific is being saturated by some kind of seismic energy, and that's coming across, obviously, with this. Now, if you follow that down, it goes across over to South Sandwich. Let's look at the 5.0 and greater and see what struck in the past few days. Well, I'll be darned. Look at that. You guys notice anything? How about zero earthquake activity 5.0 and greater down here at the South Atlantic, really, or really just the South Sandwich Islands, now you go down to fours, and then all of a sudden you can see there's been a couple that was at the start of the week. It's gone completely quiet there. As energy is coming down to the south, apparently we are locked down here to the south. I would expect South Sandwich to go next, or pretty soon. Our other X's are also going to be going, if you haven't paid attention over the past few weeks, our northern X got hit with 6.0 level activity up here, plus an eruption at Iceland. We also had a North Pole earthquake that was pretty significant a few, well, about two weeks ago now. So the X's are being hit one after the other, and it's taking about a week between each point. So here we are on Antipode Day, Antipode Earthquake Day. X marks the spot. We go through the planet, back through to the six on the opposite side. Now, we're not done with this update yet. We still got a lot more to go, guys. I haven't done one in a minute, and again, I'm not live anymore. I've been shut off. Somebody, or the New World Order, or both, shut me off. I literally don't have the ability to stream. Oh, I'm on my wife's computer now. I could probably F this one up, too, if I want to get back on and try and do it. But, look, I'm, I'm not going to keep catching the horns on this, guys. I'm going to start doing video updates and upload them wherever I can, whenever I can. Now, let's talk about the earthquakes coming out of the West Pacific, going up to the north, going up to Japan, for instance, and the size of the earthquakes. 4.6, 4.7 over the past few days. They're all marked here in pink. And then the whitish colored earthquake today, a 5.3 back on the plate boundary. But it's really just a stepping stone path of mid-range fours. And again, we have 5.3 to 5.4 from a day and a half, two days ago. Let me get that out of there. Now, why do these fours and upper fours matter? Look what's creeping out across Russia, heading out across over towards our other 5.3 to 5.4 that just struck today on the plate boundary over at eastern Pakistan or north Afghanistan. And let me show you the plate boundary here. Go back to the USGS map one more time. This spot over here at the northwest tip of the Indo-Australian plate. Here's the earthquake, 5.4. No, notice where it is. All the way at the pinnacle tip of the Indo-Australian plate. Now, I just told you about 5.3 to 5.4 that struck pretty much parallel to this, but it's 3,000 miles over to the east, which is on the plate boundary at the Pacific. So now we have 5.3 to 5.4 here. We have a 5.3 to 5.4 here. What's connecting in between? Let's go look. Well, you see the plate boundary. It goes down through Indonesia. What's going on in Indonesia? What size? A 5.1 to 5.2. Well, wouldn't you say a 5.1 to 5.2 is pretty much similar to a 5.3? We're talking about a difference of a minuscule amount of 5.3 to a 5.2 to 5.1. So 5.3, 5.3, 5.2, 5.1, and a 5.3. Now, we're not done. I'm showing you everything 4.0 and greater. Look what struck in Europe yesterday. Notice? See? 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 I told you so! 
<laughs> Professionals. Rah, 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 rah. See, I, I hate it when people do that. But I just did it. So there you go. 5.3 going across over the west all the way out over towards Europe. And following the plate boundaries perfectly. So 5.3 in South Europe on the W-shaped plate boundary here. 5.3 here. Again, at Afghanistan-Pakistan border region following the plate boundary. 5.1 to 5.2. Again, hair of a point difference. Not that big of a difference. Same size. Down here on the plate boundary at Indonesia. 5.2 to 5.3 at the plate boundary here northeast of Australia. 5.3 over here at Japan. Uh, I, I'm seeing a lot of 5.3. <laughs> sure seems like there's a spread of the same sized earthquake going over. Oh, you conspiracy theorist, how dare you? I say it. Mine is the Royal Society of know it -alls, and we didn't know it, so how dare you? Anyway, let's go across over to the United States and talk about the spread of earthquakes going across the North American Craton, all the same size. Uh, again, we're within a hair of a point of each other. 3.2 to 3.3 off the coast, 3.3 to 3.4 over at Idaho above the Yellowstone magma chamber. Yellowstone's over here at the Wyoming border, but Idaho has the magma chamber down below it. Anyway, same size quakes coming off the west coast, going down through California and over to Texas, following the Craton. And we are again at exact, again, 3.2 to 3.3. We have a 3.3 to 3.4. We have a 3.4 to 3.5, and then a 3.5. So 3.2, 3.3, 3.4, 3.5 going right over to, and then yesterday, this struck yesterday, a three out in front of it over on the plate boundary at Texas's pumping operations. So those are pumping operations in Texas. In case you don't know, oil pumping operations get hit with earthquakes, not just fracking. You may have heard of the fracking earthquakes. That was a, a lot of hoopla when they were denying that there was fracking earthquakes and wastewater disposal earthquakes, but that's kind of out of now we all know that. But uh, what about the oil wells? Well, it turns out the oil wells do the same thing to the frack wells and the Turns out there are perforations in the plate. That's what's causing the earthquakes, not wastewater disposal. So perforation in the plate. How do we know? You can just zoom out a few hundred feet. And you'll see all around it are a bunch of oil pumping operations. <laughs> but and again, oil. Now, they may be doing fracking here, too. They might be. Oh, wait. Look, we blurred out. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, uh, the Internet just died. That's what just happened. Oh, it's back. Hey. Somebody sitting there with a dial deciding whether or not I get to say something. Jesus. Pardon my language, Lord. Jeez. For crying out loud, man. Anyway, whatever, guys. We're the oil pumping operations all the way around it. And that is just literally there's about 100 right around the actual earthquake epicenter. But we're talking tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of wells here. I'm going to turn off all this other baloney here and uh, see if that slows things down or speeds things up. That's not helping at all. Okay. Anyway, once this dang thing loads, after my modem kicks in, uh, 56K apparently. Kids don't even know what that means. Oil pumping is what you're going to see, if they'll allow you to see it. That's why they don't show it on the USGS map, because they're oil company's big sponsor of the USGS, in case you didn't know. So the reason you zoom in on the USGS map and it's solid white is because they don't want you to see the oil pumping operations there. You know why? Professionals at the USGS said earthquakes only strike at wastewater disposal wells. And that's a big change from where they were when I came around 10 years ago. Because 10 years ago, they said fracking and wastewater disposal doesn't cause earthquakes. And that anybody who said that is a tree-hugging, uh, what do they call me? A tree-hugging conspiracy theorist for saying that the earthquake striking at the oil wells and the frack wells were related to the oil wells and the frack wells. That was 2011, 2012. Then the biggest earthquakes in the U.S. Mid Midwest since the New Madrid earthquake struck, and they all struck at oil wells and frack wells, and the USGS and the professionals had to change their tune. So they first denied that there was any relation between the drill points and the earthquakes. Then they tried to blame it only on wastewater disposal. Well, that completely overlooks all the oil wells where the earthquakes are striking. Okay, enough complaining. Let's go down over here onto the West Coast and go see where our threes are striking and then go take a look at the smaller twos and ones and so forth that are connecting between them. So coming down to San Andreas, 3.4 and 3.5 and another 3.4 and 3.5. When did these strike? Hold on. First, this 3.5 struck at 1857 UTC. Then this 3.5 struck at 2255. So... What, four or five hours later? 
So first this one, then this one. Now that doesn't mean that we're creeping to the north, I don't think. But first, let's like a game of leapfrog. First this, then this. But look what's out in front of it. Yesterday. Last night. September 3rd at 17.04 UTC. So first, let's just recap. Really? First, it was this 3.5 down south in California. Then followed by this 3.0 right here along the coast. Then followed by this 3.5. Then followed by this 3.5. Well, it would give you the appearance that we're moving from south to north instead of from north to south. If that's the case, which I don't think it is, but let's just say that that's what, you know, that's how they're presenting it. That that would then mean a new earthquake's going to strike up here in northern California and that we're moving the opposite direction in the which way the arrows show normally. I'm not saying that that can't happen. The plate can shift whichever way it wants to shift, but the normal flow is going from northwest to southeast. In this case, these pinks struck first down south, then these struck back behind it. But this to me says more like this is a jam up. Think of like a car crash on the highway and uh, where there's uh, water or ice. You got one car that crashes and then the other starts sliding in from behind and hitting it. That the block point is right here and it broke yesterday. Now we start backing up behind it, filling up with energy. And that out in front of it, we should get a new break as this all breaks free and goes over to Texas and a new four or bigger breaks out of the Texas border with New Mexico. All right, now I want to see what's down here at the earthquake epicenters. I'm going to do something here that no one is willing to do, which is to look up the earthquakes at their epicenters and show you what is there and discuss the oil wells, the power lines, the power generating facilities, the nuke power plants, the coal-fired power plants, the power lines coming off of them, the solar power plants, how they're all getting hit with earthquakes. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm going to show you what's there. And if you don't like it or you've got a problem with people showing stuff, I, 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 don't, know, I don't know what to tell you, but I've ran into a serious issue with people. Uh, me showing what is at the earthquake epicenters tends to drive a lot of people nuts. Now, I don't know why, because all I do is just show you what's there. This spot here, for instance, Manhattan Beach off Hermosa Beach, uh, right here in northwest L.A., right here along the coast. You guys may remember just a few months back, there was some pretty serious stuff that happened out here, going from right down here where the Queen Mary is, along Belmont and so forth, all the way around up here, massive oil spill and massive sewage leak. First, sewage somehow was being pumped out here in pipes, and it broke. And the pipe broke, released the sewage. I don't know why they'd be pumping sewage out there, but whatever. Then there was an oil pipeline that was coming from the offshore rigs, which are right out here off the coast. This is down here now where the oil broke. Now, oh, oh wow, look, super slow to load. Pipeline goes from that oil well to the beach over here and comes up on land and goes to the refinery, which is, wow, Stone Age slow, but refinery is in here somewhere. It's just massive. Well, there's several of them, but well, here's one. But you're not gonna see it because it's literally so low so low resolution, it won't low. I've never seen it go this slow. All right, back to it. Earthquake strikes out there off the coast, right next to it. Have to pay attention to it because of the previous breakage that happened at, uh, after earthquake struck out there previously. So previously, earthquake struck out here in the 2 to 3.0 range. I did a video, several videos talking about it, showing the nearby wells, showing what is on land. Then pipeline breaks out in the ocean right there, and they blame it on a ship with an anchor. Then the sewage break, and they br blame that on just a sewage break. It just makes no sense to me. But anyway, uh, that's the alternate explanations for the quakes, other than they're obviously happening next to spots where there are drill points. So earthquake out there, I normally pay attention to it in relation to the other quakes that are striking around the area. So let's go look up this one down to the south, see what's on land. 
Now, this goes into one of the most famous earthquake zones in Southern California in the past 50 years. And let's get our depth on the quake, by the way. Hold on one second. Our depth on the quake is 11.3 kilometer depth and the location Mira Loma. We can look on the USGS fault zone map to show you the mishmash of faults that go through the area there. There we are, Mira Loma. Now, I think there's something else here. I do recall there being something else here nearby. I have to check to see. The only way to know is to look it up. So let's put the coordinates in and see. Paste and search. Okay. Oh, I already did it. Sorry. Okay. This is the Mira Loma earthquake location. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, this is, we just got to talk about it. See this place called Glen Avon right here? A series of earthquakes broke out right along this going back over towards these houses and so forth up the ridge. This is a few years ago. And it was a big earthquake swarm. And I made videos on it, talking about it, and I wanted to find out if there were drill points that were there for oil and gas. And the reason I wanted to find out about drill points for oil and gas is there are other locations over to the east, just a few miles, and over to the west, that are actual functional oil fields still. So I was just trying to find out if there was oil here at when the swarm broke out here at Glen Avon. So I did some digging, no pun intended, found the old oil well records, and there was a guy who came out here, uh, a, a guy who ran a company out of Idaho who did oil well exploration back in the 1930s. And he came out here and did drilling and drilled a whole bunch of spots looking for oil, and he didn't find any here on this range. Instead, he found gold. So he took the gold that he found, which was something like several ounces per ton. So it was like a lot of gold. And he took the survey assay, the assays or whatever, they, they, the, the stuff out of the ground, took it and gave it to the authorities in California. And he moved on to go do more oil exploration. Well, about 15 years went by from the point where the guy found the gold. Oh, and he capped off the drill points with... Um, wood, wood plugs, and a few bags of concrete, and told them where he found the gold and left. Anyway, so about 15 years goes by, and now we're in the late 1940s, early 1950s. And there is a company, there's freshly formed Department of Defense companies, well, not Department of Defense with the government, but uh, uh, like big companies formed, like Raytheon and so forth, uh, Northrop Grumman and a few others, and they came out to this spot in particular and started dumping industrial acid into the ground. And they did it for like 30 or 40 years and then stopped. California allowed them to do this for some reason, dump acids into the ground here. I was shocked to read all that. I couldn't believe what I was reading. So then, starting in about the 1960s, or what? No, I'm sorry, 30 or 40 years, so it was probably the 70s. Starting in the 70s, they came out and started quarrying where they dumped the acid for a quarry to make concrete. And no talk of the gold down in the ground or why you would dump a bunch of acid down into a bunch of rock that contains a bunch of gold. Why would you dump a bunch of acid down into the ground, into the drill points that the guy found gold in? I don't know. Probably for the same reason they do have the big acid pits over in Africa, in South Africa, where they get all the gold from there. I just wonder if they do it in open pits out in the area. It's probably a little toxic, but they don't care because it's out in the middle of the desert in Africa. I, but here in California, I bet they would, I don't know, want to have it contained somehow. I don't know. Maybe it's just my conspiratorial thoughts that chime in on that. Think that they're getting the gold out of there and just that the quarry's just a front for getting it. Why did the Department of Defense and the big, big contractors come out here and dump the acid in the ground of all the places there? Why did I have to find out about it when an earthquake swarm struck there? Now imagine my shock and surprise when 
after I made my video talking about the earthquakes here, a professional from California, a few of them, a professor and Dr. Lucy something, show up talking about this spot, saying there's nothing there to worry about and that it's just normal earthquake swarm, a normal earthquake swarm. Well, guess what happened after they said it was normal? And I'm talking like in the week, maybe maybe seven days. Over here, on the other side of LA, the tar pits, the famous tar pits. I don't know exactly where they are. They're somewhere right up here. The tar pits overflowed and came up into the sewer system and flowed through the sewer system and came up at street level across the streets and down the street from the tar pits themselves. The tar pits suddenly raised. The professionals weighed in. Or no, they didn't. I'm sorry. I weighed in. And everybody said it didn't mean anything. And they, 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 I go, where, where are the previous examples of this? You know, and everybody's like, oh, uh, uh, it was just silent. About two days later, then over here in North LA, somewhere over here, somewhere right in here, the sewer system exploded and sent the manhole covers shooting sky high like 50 feet in the air. The, man, the, the huge heavy manhole covers, 50 feet blown in the air like some kind of movie, like the movie Volcano with Tommy Lee Jones. Oh, by the way, if you go watch Tommy Lee Jones in the movie Volcano, he plays Mike from St. Louis. Go watch it. You'll see. Yeah. Anyway, so the manhole covers blue sky high. So let me recap. First, an earthquake swarm breaks out over here at Glen Avon. I zoom in, see the swarm, wonder, find out what's there, find out the real truth about the location. <laughs> Couldn't believe myself, shit myself, make a video about it. Professionals came out denying it. Then the tar pits overflowed. They stayed silent. The professionals literally didn't say shit, even though it was on the news. Then the sewer system exploded. Then up here at this place called Ridgecrest, the biggest earthquake in California's history. Oh, I'm sorry. The biggest earthquake in the 20, past 20 years in California hit right here at Ridgecrest. That was all in the week leading up to the big quake right here at Ridgecrest. So let's go back to the plate boundary map and show you why it all happened. Let's turn back on the, pardon my language on a lot of that guys, I get a little fired up, but you know, it is what it is. Man. So here are the plate boundaries and the faults. The plate boundaries are marked in dark red, which is the San Andreas, of course, you can see it there, it goes up. Again, these are the same red lines I've been showing you throughout the update that go around the whole planet. Plate boundary comes in here through California, San Andreas goes down, goes down east of Salton Sea. All right, now down in here, where the earthquake is, the current three, but over here at where Glen Avon is and so forth, you, well, you see, we clearly have faults going through there. This is the Elsinore Fault. It goes right through Lake Elsinore, and that's why it's called the Elsinore Fault. Elsinore Fault goes up and it goes right next to it, and over to the east, then we have the San Jacinto, and we have the, of course, San Andreas. Now, I'm just gonna say it. Uh, when you get a outbreak of earthquakes that strikes between them, and in this case, we are going right here, directly in between the two, and they don't have a marked fault there, the drill points are the reason. There's a perforation between the two faults. Quite literally, that's what we're looking at. So a perforation between the two faults, all of a sudden it breaks, and it's a sign that the whole fault system in Southern California is being inundated right now with at least 3.5's worth of energy. And it's going all the way down the San Andreas as of today, or backing up the San Andreas, I should say. So we're blocked down here. We're flowing in from up here with the white colored earthquakes and in between the two, stress builds. Kind of like what happened last time. Now we're not at a swarm yet at Glen Avon, as far as I can tell. Hold on, let's go see. Turn this down to zeros. Maybe, maybe there is a swarm and I'm wrong. Hold on. Zoom in and see. That's the only way to find out. If there's a swarm there, it's a little different than just a single three. Ah, look, okay. When I, whenever we get over 10 earthquakes in a spot, I consider it a swarm. We're right on the threshold of it being a swarm. We have a 3.5 plus a bunch of other smalls, zeros, and ones, but not equaling 10 quakes in a day. So that's just an artificial threshold I've put on the quakes for a swarm. I mean, it's just a number I picked, sort of. So what do I consider a swarm? Anything over 10 quakes. If it's under 10 quakes, I consider it a cluster. What's the difference? You know, A swarm can get really big. 
you can get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of or thousands of earthquakes in a swarm. And in this case, it's just like 10. So a three with a little bit of activity afterwards. They might even be aftershocks. But it's breaking in the middle point, which means that Southern California is inundated. The middle point between what? Between the fault. We can trace this back down to LA. If we look up the smaller earthquakes in LA, all the ones, for instance. Well, I mean, we could do that. Let's go look up the one. 1.1 in Huntington Park, Huntington Park, California. And the way you do it is just literally put the coordinates in. This is what's got me in so much trouble over the years. Putting the coordinates in and looking them up and telling you. It turns out there's a lot of people who don't want you to know what's at the earthquake epicenter because, well, first of all, they thought earthquakes were random. So finding out that there's a reason is kind of upsetting them. Well, isn't this special what we have here? Looks like we have some kind of warehouse facility, uh, label techs, right? Okay. Ah, wow, hey. Well, guys, this location has a nice history. The history is oil. There were tens of thousands of wells across this part of LA in particular. Now, the leftover remnants, today's current operation, can be seen here at the Baldwin Hills if the image will load on Google Earth. Keep in mind, I'm using Starlink. Unobstructed in the sky. No trees above it. What's going on? Maybe I should go do a speed test. See what I'm, what am I? Because I'm not streaming, so it's not like there should be a big lag on any kind of information coming in. We're going to wait. I'll wait all day. I'll wait all day. Hey, there we go. They freed it up. This is so annoying. So what we're going to see once the image loads is a oil pumping operation that's been here for over 100 years. And it's kind of reduced down in size. And it's pretty big still, of course. But... It used to extend all the way across tens of thousands of wells. And we go right over across over to our earthquake epicenter over here where it's now an industrial park of some kind. Now there may even be still oil wells spread out and kind of hidden in here. They'll have them in parks, next to schools, on street corners, in public areas, next to railroad tracks. Even the railroad themselves will even own some of the wells. Now, I don't know if that's the case here, but I can tell you, it pro I mean, again, we could probably go down the road and possibly find oil wells literally still in here that are still functional. It's just a matter of miles. Uh, again, I always look six to 10 miles for our earthquakes, between our earthquake pumping operations, earthquakes and pumping operations. So let's just see how far we are roughly from, well, that's, that's centimeters. 1.1 million centimeters. 6.9 miles, definitely, okay. So the reason I look six to 10 miles, first of all, the USGS used to look six to 10 miles out from an earthquake, out in like Oklahoma, for instance. They've changed that rule because of the number of oil wells. But anyway, we are looking in, we're within seven miles. Uh, definitely, they can drill out in an angle and put it right down below. The drill point could go right down below this from all the way over there. Yes, they can drill out that far. What do we have going on here, track? that pipeline or track one of the two we have oil trucks pipe right next to it so you see how many tanker trucks there are okay i'm spending a little bit of time on this but i just want to drive home the point that our oil pumping operations our drill points are vulnerable just like as if they are a volcano or a fault zone that when you drill a point it becomes susceptible to this seismic flow that's coming across the area Going over to far eastern California, we're actually at the California-Nevada border. Very rare to have a 1.9 out here. I could call, count maybe a handful of times that we're out here in California. Wait, we're out here in California, right? Dude, hold on. Yeah, sure are. We're out here in California. It's listed as Nevada even though we literally have a town right next to it where they could triangulate from. Mountain Pass right here is the town. See it? See that? See the road and so forth? Okay, uh, I'm going to have to get the coordinates on this and go look it up. That's suspicious right there. When they, when they do that, it's usually because they don't want to draw their 
your eye to California and people just look at a feed and they see NV and they know that means Nevada and they just don't give a shit. No offense to the people in Nevada, but. So let's, let's go. I, I'm just talking about the rest of the world. Like they hear about a small earthquake in Nevada. They don't care. Oh, gee, is it listed as an explosion? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> oh, no. It's not listed as an explosion. It's an earthquake. Gee, I wonder why they don't want the public. Go look it up. Just can't figure it out. Now you know why I get in trouble. Seriously. Now you know why I get in trouble. You know how many like these people like billionaire miners? They're like, ah. Oh. I find the quake there. Oh, look what we're right next to. Huge power generating facility. Look at these solar farms. Oh, wait, you can't see them. Well, let's just wait for it to load. We'll wait for 21st century technology to up, catch up with my fast brain. My psychic fast brain where I already know it's at the location before it even loads. How could I have known they were solar farms without the image loading? Oh, you mean I've looked this location up before? You mean there's other earthquakes that strike below this spot? My God, you see this? Like, seriously, somebody cue up the modem sound. What am I getting my information on a fax machine? Man. All right. Anyway, solar farm out the ass. I'm real fired up today, you can tell, all right? All right, let's go and uh, just wrap this sucker up. What's going on up in Northern California coming out of the Northwest? Uh, again, up in Washington and Oregon. Well, if we look at the earthquakes in Washington, for instance, you'll find most of them are coming in right next to the volcanoes. So, for instance, this little cluster of earthquakes here, directly in the crater of Mount St. Helens. And this other little cluster of earthquakes to the north up here on both sides of Mount Rainier volcano on both flanks. Now, it doesn't mean that St. Helens or Rainier is going to erupt, but your eye is probably drawn to this actual swarm that's down here on the Oregon side of the border, eh? Let's go look it up. I said, eh, I'm not from the north. See how it says Mount Hood area? What's really funny is this used to say government camp. Let's go see if we, hold on, hold on. Yeah, there we go. See how it says northeast of government camp. Uh, Mount Hood area. Well, you know what? I appreciate them doing that to USGS because it does tell you what's at the location. Mount Hood. What's Mount Hood? Mount Hood is a stratovolcano that most people in the Northwest know about. Right here. See it? Hey, it loaded pretty quick. Or at least the side of it did. The flank where the earthquake hit. Anyway, Mount Hood right here, stratovolcano, earthquake on the side of it, and it's a swarm. So, why is there a swarm at Mount Hood? Why is there a cluster at Mount St. Helens? And why is there a small little outbreak over here on the sides of Mount Rainier? Well, all three volcanoes are connected to the plate boundary out to the west, which is being slightly compressed. And you can see it's being compressed because you can follow the arrows from compression point to compression point. And well, when I say compression, I really talk about a wave. So a wave is arriving. It's going into here to the magma chamber at Yellowstone. It's going in through California, focusing in down on Southern California in between. And then in between the two, we have outbreaks going on, the San Andreas. And I didn't even talk about this over at the California-Nevada border. That's a super volcano at the California-Nevada border called Long Valley Caldera, where this stack is here that I'm highlighting. Across the border over in Nevada is Monte Cristo Hills Volcanic Buttes. So Monte Cristo Hills Volcanic Buttes, the super volcano at the California-Nevada border, both clustering out with a series of earthquakes connecting around them, almost like a ring. Now, there's one lone cluster back up here to the north, south of Lake Tahoe. A 6.0 earthquake struck here, and there's a geothermal pumping operation just to the north. Geothermal for the volcanic field that's there, called Steamboat Springs. So, I wonder what the earthquakes at the California-Nevada border are related to. A super volcano, a volcanic field, and geothermal pumping operations and geothermal. What do all three of those things have in common? Oh, magma down below? That is pretty much what they have in common with what's up to the north, isn't it? 
What does Mount Hood, Mount St. Helens, and Mount Rainier, what do they all have in common? Oh, they're all mountains. That's it. That's it. They're all mountains. What about the magma chamber over here to the east, down below Idaho with Yellowstone? Get, are those mountains too? Mountains of magma. Anyway, it doesn't mean eruption. It just means that these weak points are going to get hit as the new inundating wave is reaching into the United States. And, of course, we expect this. We expect the inundating seismic wave to come through the United States and go literally across the whole Midwest and go up to the East Coast. So far, we're on a 3.0 level. I think we're going to go up a whole notch. I think we're going to go up to fours. So we should see fours go West Coast, Midwest, East Coast. We're already at several mid-range threes and it honestly if you take them and add them together it equals a four but i know a lot of people don't add the magnitudes so you take all these mid-range threes and it's going to lead to four at each location between the threes so it means at least a few fours are coming in at the halfway points between the threes so let's find where the halfway points are between the threes uh the most obvious one there's a three-way halfway point a triway point and that comes in at Northern California, where all three sets of the rings overlap. That's right here on Mount Shasta, or Southwest Oregon, going as far west as the ocean, of course, and as far east as the Nevada-Oregon border with Idaho. But you see where all three sets of rings overlap. We're trying to get it within 200 miles of here. So something's going to strike in the middle point there, bigger than what's on all three sides now, in the next few days. Uh, down to the south, this is also a pretty easy halfway point to determine. Look where it's coming in. It's coming in from Ridgecrest across down to Lompoc or Santa Cruz out in the islands there, out of the coast. Now, there's oil pumping operations just north of Santa Cruz, and there's oil pumping operations going right across the middle of this whole thing, or at least out to the San Andreas. And then once you get over here to Ridgecrest, we're on the Garlock, but... Along the coast, it's all drill points, and then we go back to Ridgecrest. I already talked about Ridgecrest. Why was I talking about Ridgecrest? Because it looks like it's set up like the last time, back in 2018. Or was it 2017? Anyway. Third spot to watch. Right over here, well, actually, there's a fourth, third and a fourth spot to watch. Third spot to watch is right here on the back side of the red arrow. Now, all these spots are going to get hit. It's not like we're just going to pick one. I'm like, oh, watch here, watch here, watch here, watch here. One of those is going to get hit. No, all of these spots is going to get hit with the fours in between. So, anyway, here where all three sets of rings overlap, look where they go. So, it's literally just on the other side. We're right on the Monte Cristo Hills Volcanic Buttes going to the super volcano in the middle western portion of Nevada. Now, the fourth spot to watch is going to be this spot where the two sets of rings overlap. That goes down here on the plate boundary in southwest and up to Amarillo, Texas, to the north. So 200-mile stretch right here in the middle. And then it's not even on here yet. And let me look at the smaller earthquakes to see if we can even get a, a better determination. Okay, yeah, we can. So between the two sets of quakes here, one coming out of the Indiana border region with Kentucky in the New Madrid Seismic Zone and the Wabash Valley Seismic Zone, and one up here on the coast of Maine. So the halfway point, if we go down and around the bend of the plate and come back up to the quake, puts us West Virginia, Mountain Mama. All right, so West Virginia. And that puts us to near 4.0 in West Virginia. Have I forgotten anybody in the United States? Ah, Alaska. Well, should I even remember you after what you just did? Up there, what you guys just did. Congratulations on your, on your vote. I want to congratulate you guys on your vote, you know. It matters. So here we go. We're in Alaska. And what's up here in Alaska? Well, uh, it's not very much different than what's been going on for the last several thousand years. There's a flow of earthquakes coming in from over to the west. They go up and jump off the plate boundary, go hammer up into Mount Denali. Then we flow down to the south, and we follow the plate boundary into the areas that I just talked about. There's a big quiet zone in between here, and that's not quiet because there's no earthquakes. Wait, is that a proper use of a double negative? Anyway, it's not that there's a lack of quakes here. 
It's that they're literally not reporting the quakes to us on the USGS or EMSC feed. Do you really think the coast of Canada is quiet every week? No. Anyway, we could go check the Canadian feed, but it's a 30-day feed, and it doesn't work here on Earthquake 3D very well. And going to their site doesn't really help much either, does it? Okay, going across the Aleutians, we jump off up into Denali. Now, notice there's a big stack of earthquakes here, and they're all zeros. They're literally a stack of microquakes. But we need to look the location up and just see what's there. Sometimes there can be something at the location. Sometimes it can just be plate boundary and fault related. Carluke, Alaska. Sounds interesting. What's there? I don't have my place marks for volcanoes, so I don't know how well this is going to help us unless we actually zoom in on a peak or something, mountaintop or some kind to get a name identifier on here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay, we got big craters here. Hold on. So, yes, this is definitely a swarm at a volcano, but I need to get the names on here. So I guess I need to turn on... Boy, that sh it should have the names. Wow, I can't believe I don't have names or place marks now. All of a sudden, they're gone. Crater Lake! Thank you for bringing it on, by the way. You freaking censoring freaks. So, Crater Lake. All right. Oh, and these are lava flows, by the way. So, this is not glacier flow. These are lava flows, old lava flows, that come off of this, whatever this is called. Mount Magic? No freaking way. Mount Magic. Mount M-A-G-E-I-K. Gotta be sh dude. All right, we're done. We're done. Take your pagan stuff and shit. No offense to you, pag uh, your pagans out there. <laughs> no offense, but take it and shove it, man. Leave me alone, guys. You guys are freaking freaks. Don't you have anything better to do? You already shut me down. What are, <laughs> what are you coming to do? Rub it in? <laughs> All right. Anyway, enough ranting. One final thing, let's just quickly bring my European and Middle Eastern viewers up to speed as to what's going on across the Mideast. I, I, I forgot Hawaii. Dang. All right, we'll get to you. Uh, Mahala, guy, I'm going to get to you in a minute. Get behind the Europeans. All right, so we have a series of 5.3s coming over to Europe. I already talked about that at the start of the update. The difference is that once we get to this, where this 5.3 struck, we take a full step down from 5s to 4s, from 4.2 to 4.3, and then from 4s to 3s, and we go from 3.2 to 3.3. So let's recap. 5.3, 4.3, 3.3. That's where we are now. 5s, 4s, 3s flowing across the plate. What does that tell you? That tells you, that should tell you, that Europe is absorbing... Like a sponge, it is taking in the energy from the plate boundary to the south. And let me open up the plate boundary here and show it to you one more time. Here. The W-shaped plate boundary connects back over to Iran and so forth. So we got 5.3 coming across, 5.3 strikes over here. Then we go down to 4.3 and 3.3 as we're reaching out over to the west, trying to go out to the T-intersection. But we're taking a step down magnitude-wise as we're going across, which means guess who's absorbing the energy? Right? It's coming across this way. It's trying to reach out here. And it's taking a magnitude step down across the way. Who's absorbing the energy? The plate boundary to the north going up into Italy. That's who's absorbing the energy. And look which way the earthquakes went. Hmm. It's a miracle. They went the same freaking way. I tried to show this to professionals, and they said I was faking earthquakes to make it look like there was a progression. By the way, in case you're new here, I tried to show this to everybody for the last 12 years. They accused me of faking the quakes. I saw I took them live. I started a live stream of earthquakes to show all the quakes, and then I got hacked and shut down after six years of being threatened and death threatened. I finally, they destroyed my computers, and I'm not allowed to stream anymore after going live to prove that I wasn't faking the quakes. Let's go ahead and go into a, a beautiful Hawaii now. Uh, let's just quickly talk about this. 
First of all, Hawaii got hit last week with the expected magnitude. We went up into the four-ish range. Now we've swarmed. We swarmed out back around Pahala along the coast, going over to Pu'u'o'o. We're coming off of Mauna Loa itself and going down to Pu'u'o'o. So from Mauna Loa to Pu'u'o'o, it means there's a line of quakes going across the entire middle rift zone, the middle eastern rift zone, but not to be confused with the mid east over in the mid east, the middle rift zone where Kilauea is and the Hawaii Volcano National Park going down to the east of here. I mean, Mark. So going to the east of the blue earthquake, Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, Pu'u'u'u'u, so forth. Going down to the south where the big cluster is, that's Pahala. And then the brown splotch is Mauna Loa. Let me show it to you on beautiful Google Earth, which gives us a little bit better view of this. If it'll load. I don't see why they wouldn't let it load, so... And I am doing a freaking speed test as soon as I get out of here, guys. I can't show it to you on screen because it'll give you my IP, but I'm telling you, this is getting ridiculous. So here's Mauna Loa. Here's Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. Here's Pu'u'u'u'u. And here's Kilauea. And our earthquakes go from the peak or the western flank top, well, down below it, of course, but up inside the volcano, we then go across over to here with that line of quakes. Let's go compare. See it? From the peak across down to the coast. Let's do that one more time on Google Earth. From the peak across down to the coast. So what's right through there? Let's zoom in right in the middle. What's this? Anybody ever hear of a place called Kilauea? I'm probably butchering the way it's pronounced. Maybe, maybe it's not. They're like, no, I've never heard of that place. So you're saying it wrong. Anyway, there's a line of quakes going right across. So what's the biggest in the middle? That means a new quake is coming in the middle of the middle, in the middle of this whole mess. So if we were to make this into a giant oval shape and connect in the earthquake to the north too, let's go up to the north, up next to Mauna Kea and go see what's up there. I heard they were going to be doing geothermal drilling up there. Dude, dude, who's the freaking genius there? Seriously, like brain dead moron, some freaking idiot. Oh, let's go do some geothermal drilling, get some steam dirt. Dirt. Be sure to add that to the back of whatever they say whenever they respond. Just add dirt to the back and that'll freaking sum up and put a geothermal pumping operation up here on the north side of Mauna Kea. Anyway, let's go see where we are. Now, of course, this isn't going to work. If they are out there doing some kind of drilling or something, I'm not going to see it for at least a few months to a few years till we get another flyover of the location. But uh, we're already on the flank of a bunch of small old spatter cones. You see these. Think of these like kind of like what happened over at the Canary Islands. So you remember that last year with the big eruption went on for six months or something like that. It was insane. But look how many there are, right? They go back up to the top of the peak of the volcano where all the observatories are. They built the, uh, again, the, these observatories up here on the top of the volcano. Mauna Kea. Here, let me make a modem sound. Okay, there we go. And I just have to wonder about the geothermal on the north side here. Where? Where? Where are they going to do it? It was not up for debate whether or not they were going to do it. Again, they, it was like big talk about it. So it's not a conspiracy theory. Like people are like, oh, they might do it. People are like, Dutch, did you hear they're doing geothermal on the north side of Monarchy? I'm like, where? Nobody responds. What is this? A house out in the middle of nowhere. Okay. With a nice lake. A dilapidated house out in the middle of nowhere with a nice lake in Hawaii. What the? We got a population problem on the planet, Dutch. We got a real population problem. You got too many people. Says the people who've never been out across the country. Literally everywhere I look, there's just open expanse of land with no one anywhere. All right. On that note. Is this Truman Show or what? Let's get back to it. The earthquakes that struck are big earthquakes, 6.9, let's just call it a 7, on one side of the planet within a day of our 6 on the other. And they are quite literally almost exact antipodes of one another by just maybe a few degrees. So X marks the spot from the earthquake on the opposite side of the planet. Now, this is not where we're going to stop seismically. 
we are actually, this to me is a sign that the planet's getting ready to go into some major overdrive. That when you get earthquakes on both sides of the planet like this, in a 6.0 to 7.0 range, it means something's going on between these two points. What's between this point and this point? What's halfway between here and here if we go through the planet? Want to see? Let me back it out. Turn off the Earth. Turn on our angle connections to the core of the Earth. And then you're going to see it. What's on one? What's at the halfway point between the two earthquakes on either side of the planet, guys? Well, flat earthers are going to disagree. And I might not blame them because I'm starting to distrust everything. But I'm zooming in on it. We're looking in at the core of the Earth. So something's going on down below that's then coming out on both sides, up and away from the core of the Earth within a day of each other. And that, to me, says something's getting ready to happen around the whole Earth. And then we look between our current earthquakes to figure out where on the whole Earth it's going to break out next. I could keep going. We could talk about a lot of the other earthquake activity, but I think this update fully covers the big earthquakes and what struck out towards Europe and what struck towards the United States. As for forecasting, forecasting, schmorecasting, everybody can kiss my ass. Uh, well, maybe not, but kiss your master's ass. That's who the people who shut me down. Seriously, like dark souls and freaking satanic, whatever they are. I don't know what they are, but whatever it is, they're not good. It may be, hopefully it's AI, in which case it's kind of both or all of the above. Whatever it is, I would encourage you guys to not be scared. You need to be prepared. And I'm for real about this. You need to have an earthquake plan. You need to know what to do when an earthquake strikes. You need to be able to take shelter underneath a table or a desk, which means you need a table or a desk to take shelter underneath. A lot of people have glass tabletop this and plastic that. Wood or metal. It's going to protect you from falling things from up above. Pretty simple. People say I'll run to a door frame. Who told you to do that? Oh, the professionals? Oh, really? You know... A Mandela effect took place. The professionals now say that they never told us to get underneath the door frame, and that that was just a wives' tale that appeared in the 1800s from some picture of an 1800s building destroyed in an earthquake, and that everybody just thought they were supposed to go underneath a, a door frame because of that picture, that the professionals never told us to get under a door frame. Mandela effect. And also, if you go watch The Wizard of Oz, you're going to find out that the Scarecrow now carries a gun. No shit. And you're going to find out, if you go watch the movie Moonraker, that the girl who falls in love with Jaws doesn't have braces anymore. But all I want to know is, who came into my house to change the VCR tape and take that out and put in a girl with nice teeth and no braces? Who changed out my Wizard of Oz VCR tape in my basement? with one that has a scarecrow carrying a gun. I'm wondering who did that. Probably the same people who changed my childhood Berenstein Bear story. All I know is that we're not supposed to go underneath door frames anymore. Because we were never supposed to go underneath door frames. You're supposed to go underneath your table or your desk. And that's the word from the professionals. Who am I to disagree? Who are you to disagree? Who's anybody to disagree? Don't be scared. Be prepared.